What is up, my chickies? What is up, people? If you've seen this day, this is the sneak peek of the week, I guess. And I'm going to assume, and others have assumed, Kodiak assumed this, um, that that is one of the guns off of the Banu Merchantman. And it makes sense with the sort of design and the styling of it. It looks really, really cool, which sort of kicks off today's video topic. I know a lot of you go, oh, well, he's going to start on this again. What a freaking moron. I'm, I'm sorry that I made that mistake. It was a misinterpretation that I had made that you won't be able to sell salvageable, salvageable materials. That was my mistake. I'm sorry that I did that. And I did correct myself through the video. But today I want to talk about the Manu Merchman coming out in 4.0 with Pyro. We might not, it might not come out that time. It might be a little bit delayed, but I would assume that with the release of Pyro that they will make sure that this is done on time. Along with that, that I want to mention that this ship is going to be quite the size, size of the ship, right? And if you can hear that sound in the background, that is my bird, just comfy and just chilling. So you would think that with the Banu Merchantman coming out in 3 or 4.0, that there will be another ship to sort of counter this ship because it's so large and has so much firepower and just has so much capability, right? Or is it just going to be, it's going to be easier to kill? I'm just making an assumption here. I also want to talk about the point that when we get Pyro, how many Banu Merchmans are going to be jumping between those two points, right? Like, that is two size 8 cannons on the front of that thing. I think it's just going to have a lot of firepower. I think it's going to need some sort of a competitor. Or people are going to be in retaliators. They're going to be in eclipses. They're going to be trying to destroy the ship. Because this ship is of, like, capital territory, right? Like, it's the same size as an Idris. That is insane to think about. And... Like, going off of the basis of talking about that, will it have the same hull integrity of an Idris, which we know the Idris is only like 15% of its true power that it's supposed to have. So, um, my whole discussion today is, what could we do? What could be implemented? What ship could we see that could potentially counter the Banu Merchantman and have something that has similar firepower compared to this ship because like I said you will have to have another Banu Merchantman to compete with the other Banu Merchantman so to me it would only make sense to have another ship of the same size or the similar power that is released to the public now we're not going to see anything like the Idris or the Polaris for a while and we might not see anything that would compete with it or just a ship in general that we could see actually destroy this thing because as you would know if you use the size 9s off a of Retaliator or you use the size 9s off of the Eclipse which are pretty much the same could that essentially just make it like a bit of a target as well like how easy will it be to hit one of these with the retaliator size 9 is it going to be easy is it going to be difficult we just don't know especially being that you know it's not it's like just a quarter of the size of the banner merchant like look at that it's just it's literally the size of the nose up to the vents here it just makes me think like they can't just go and release a ship of this size and this magnitude without having some sort of a competition for it or some way of easily destroying it. Yes, I know a lot of you are going to go to the Retaliator and some of the ships that we already have in place, but seeing that you know how big this ship is, like 239 meters long, what does that mean for the other ships that you know you have a small fighter and then this has got all these defensive weapons and it's got the massive one on top it's got the counter defensive weapons does that mean they're just going to be really easy targets for this thing or this is going to be an easy target for them because it's just going to be you know it's not going to be able to spin around as easily as what you would think but it just i like to get people to think about this sort of topic with these ships because being that you know this ship is going to be so large and just such a force to be reckoned with, like I've mentioned in the past, will there be some sort of a drawback with this ship? Will it have weaker shields? Will it have a weaker hull? Will the guns not be as good? Will this thing be nerfed as we have discussed in the past? And I know this did trigger a little bit of a reaction from the community, but going from that statement if you watch our deep dive on this ship we explain a few things about it you know we do go into the in-depth of um um theory crafting and hype like the hypothesis behind it but again what could we expect in terms of being able to destroy the ship what would you think of being able to kill this ship quite easily or the best way to counter defense it 
Let me know down in the comments what you are going to do to defend yourselves or to attack one of these because it's going to be like when you were, if you were to attack the Idris or the Javelin, you're not going to go in by yourself. You're going to take a crew with you and you're going to take a fully crewed ship. You're going to have support ships with you that can support you with firepower. Like you might take in a hammerhead, you might take in a few retaliators so you can actually concentrate the firepower on this ship. But again, it's just no real truth of knowing what we can do. The Carrick and the Hammerhead are got, have got really great firepower rates against um, like larger ships. But again, it's going to take that concentration of firing. Another good thing about having the Merchant Man is when you do the Eckhart Idris mission or you do the Idris sort of challenges um, like Xeno Threat, does that actually mean that you would have eventually eventually make it a lot easier to kill these ships what does it mean in that regards will this be able to defeat an idris easier than what you would be in a hammerhead will it take its shields down a little bit qu uh, quicker or what are they will they truly increase the power will they increase the shielding on this ship to make it a little bit more difficult for the merchant man because let's think about this let's talk about this People are going to use the Merchant Man, multiple of them, to destroy an Idris during a Xeno threat or to destroy a Javelin because it's just going to be a lot easier to use these two ships, like this ship here with two size 8s, to have multiple of them doing the exact same task and taking that ship down to the point where it has no shields left and it can be pretty much just destroyed instantly, getting people more credits a lot faster. It would just be one of those things that I would think about as being a farming method for people to do as well. It might not always be the case, but it's just something that I think about and I want other people to think about this topic as well. Let me know. I want to see what you all think about this. This is the one thing I love doing about these videos is seeing your feedback. I always try to get back to your comments. I can't always do it because it's just so... There's, there's a lot of them at the moment. Like they're, they're really coming in. But I just want you all to think about it and let me know what you're going to do in the terms and the fact that, you know, we need to be, have some sort of ability to counter the ship. And we know we've got unannounced vessels coming for 4.0 4 and even 3.18, maybe Citizen Con, maybe IAE. So in that window, are we going to see that star bomber, that single person, uh, single seated bomber? Are we going to see some sort of another, um, like, retaliator? Are we going to see another ship similar to a Corvette that actually has the firepower to be able to fight against the battery merchantman because to me it makes a little bit of un a, a little bit of weird factor right like they're bringing out a capital ship with like 100 person servers or 200 person servers wherever it's going to be when you know we it comes to being 4.0 whether or not they've gone to 200 people but it always just makes me think what their next plan is and what the, their idea is behind all this and it just makes me question it a lot so these are meant for discussion and they're a little bit of like brain fuel to get you thinking about what if, like what can be in the future of Star Citizen and the, like the upcoming year or so because we do have a lot of stuff to go through for 4.0 um, and 2023. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff on the table, but I just like to bring this discussion to you and sort of deviate from the rest of the conversation that everyone else is having to make you think a little bit different. I mean, it's not always different, but it is something that I want everyone to sort of be on the same table about and really do think about it. Like, don't overthink stuff like this because overthinking thinking it will just make it worse and like just simplifying things just simplifying the thought pattern that you will have of like when it comes to thinking about a ship like this and I may be overthinking this but it just makes sense to me and that's what I sort of base my videos off is that you know it makes sense to myself so that I can understand it a little bit easier than what I usually do so I'm sorry for dragging this on but I hope you enjoyed if you did like it leave a like comment subscribe if you didn't leave a dislike we'll see you in the verse bye bye